Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to start a new campaign in Old World Blues, a 5.0 update which Ashes and Embers, which we're playing as a Duchy Longenberg. So, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover of course, but I've played as a Duchy before in the pre-release version and I, we're going back through this with an A to Z campaign just to see what it's been like, see if there's any minor, uh, minor updates, maybe a different path perhaps than what we did originally. So, we gotta talk about the last Duchy, Longenberg. Longenburg is the last standing duchy of the Kingdom of Manitoba, having survived attempts by both the Republicans and Electorals to relegate us to the history books. The Duchy of Longenburg came into being over one and a half centuries ago, when our ancestors pledged their loyalty to the newly proclaimed King of Winnipeg, Gun I, with the Kingdom of Manitoba being proclaimed shortly thereafter. Our lands prospered. The royal border stretching all the way from the shield wall to the old Kodak. Sadly, all good things come to an end sooner or later. Unable to brunt the inevitable march of time, the King Unifier, or the Great Unifier, eventually abdicated. The crown was passed on to the king's longtime friend, the Duke of Brandon, who over the course of his reign was succeeding in unifying much of the south, today dubbed as the Crown Lands. Over the generations, the once esteemed line grew ever more complacent and decadent, as did all those at the helm of the realm's duchies, plunging the kingdom into chaos. All except us. Our ancestors stood true to our values, toiling the fields day and night as the royal court drained the coffers in the name of lavish dances and never-ending banquets. In time, the cracks began to show. The first disaster came with the loss of the kingdom's southernmost territories, held by the Duchy of Warwick, to a bloody revolt that would eventually lead to the formation of the Metis Congress. The second came shortly, thereafter with a secession of the Winnipeg and the neighboring territories which culminated in the devastating war of the Republican coalition. The electoral seized on this crisis, annexing large portions of the Duchy of Absalom, while the bulk of the army was occupied down south. The remote Duchy of Angers was swiftly carved up by mercs and scoundrels, while the Duchy of Dolphin was forever crippled by a devastating surprise attack on its royal port during the tail end of the conflict. One after another they all fell, by the time the dust settled, the only remnant of other trades lived on through us, Warwick's mechanical skills. Ongar's uh, administration, Absalom's tradesmanship, and enterprising shipbuilding. Well, hmm. I'm not sure how much really robots would help us out because we do are going down conventional warfare already. Captain comes street peddler. Uh, street peddler skills. Let's get more money. The miracle on the border. The war of the Ro Republican coalition appeared doomed from the start. Winnipeg's rebellion deprived the kingdom of its industrial heartland, forcing it to, to stretch its resources beyond the breaking point once the Metis Congress and the Electorals ended the conflict. Amidst of fighting, Langenberg appeared easy prey, and yet the Duchy would, in the end, prove to be the burial ground. And led by Duchess Sophia. She's a beloved Duchess. Maybe you didn't know that before. And the Yorktons. The Yorktons have served Langenberg's ducal family faithfully since before the inception of the kingdom. They are, in all effects, the backbone of the Duchy's corp. Hailing from a long line of primarily educators and judges, the family's roles had to evolve in recent years to ensure Longenberg's continued survival in the increasingly uncertain northern wastes, and the Marshal's finest day in the early morning of the second day of the War of the Republican Coalition. The Metis leader, Antoine Bolsoyel, marched onto the outskirts of the city of Yorkton, flanked by over 25,000 of the Congress's finest soldiers. On the Longenbergian side, unbeknownst to the enemy, stood Marshal Leif Yorkton. He was concealing an army less than half the size when spawned by an uneasy alliance between the Duchy's military and the exiles from Regina who taken up residence in Fort Capel. Assisting them was a coalition of the kingdom's most elite knights, hailing from the legendary orders of the Archangel, St. Peter, St. George, and Justice. The battle began with an artillery barrage targeting the city walls. To Antoine's surprise, fire was instantly returned from a nearby force, obliterating his position. Despite the ensuing chaos among the Metis lines, Antoine was able to consolidate his ranks before the Longenburgian troops could descend on them, ordering a hasty retreat. The move would prove disastrous, seeing an opening the marshal launched into a horseback charge alongside a squad of knights. The subsequent pursuit would break the Metis lines for good, earning the duchy an unlikely victory. The marshal could not deem his victory absolute, though. Antoine managed to scurry away, and Yorkton's daring charge to claim the lives of some of his most elite knights, including that of Torgir Weybron, Grand Master of the Order of the Archangel. Nevertheless, a crucial battle had been won on that day, one that would allow the marshal to march east and face a bulk of the Republican forces. Their sacrifices had not been in vain. Yorkton had saved the crown and the state of the duchy. The yearly state of the duchy dresses upon us a chance for the duchess to give her subjects a glimpse of what's ahead. The marshals were to receive the written statement by the royal courier ahead of the ceremony as per tradition, and a lineage of steel, baptized in blood. Leif Yorkton's father, Joran, was the first of his house to serve as the duchy's marshal. He would leave this earth having established a reputation for the fierce mental elasticity thanks to a methodical and introspective approach to battlefield planning. His descendants were determined to live up to that legacy. Leif sought to mitigate the drawbacks of his father's approach, combining Joran's knack for extensive pre-planning with a more personal approach to combat that emphasized the marshal's role in the battlefield. Eleanor, Leif's daughter, instead saw untapped potential in her grandfather's baseline ideas. She argued the importance of even more long-term planning initiatives, such as intensified special training and the teaching of military history. In the end, one of the, these perspectives will come to influence the brass the most. Methodicalness, spontaneity, rigor. I think I went with this last one when I did this off-screen because this makes the most sense. Um, so let's go with spontaneity. And new investments. 
I like the PP. Oh, that Longenbergian zappers. Reforming the bureaucracy. While Sophie is our de facto ruler, the Dutch East still employs a large complex network of bureaucrats to run the day to day operations of the state. In recent years, a number of crown servants has bloated far beyond manageable. Some targeted reforms are, of course, called for. And we get 1.2 political power every single day. We're going to begin a scavenging program. Yes, please. Uh, pause it real quick. And we'll do that one too. Cool. We have only four divisions, which is not very much at all. This kind of sucks. But uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, not. The Duchess is not dead. He came to me on a cold night. Lord awoke in the dead of night. A royal courier donned in black awaited him at the front door. He worked in photos hard sink as a man handed him a letter marked with a ducal insignia. No words needed to be exchanged. Both knew the messenger had arrived too early in the week to be delivering the state of the duchy. The man galloped and Lord left for the capital that very same night. As he galloped, Yorkton's mind wandered and in his head pictures of a great white shore were forming an incandescent ball of flame sitting on the horizon. He was young and crying. The Duchess of Absalom did not want to play hide and seek with him. He got on a way to hide in a storeroom, but Sophie trapped him down. She knelt to him and embraced him, patting him over the head. You know life. You can be the juiciest fruit in the orchid, but some people just don't like fruit. And that's okay, life goes on. Have you asked the Duke of Dauphin if you like to play? That was the first many lessons. Then came the schooling, the fencing classes, the council shadowing, the hike trails, the... Yorkton's thoughts were interrupted as a gust of cold wind washed over him. The rest of the ride was quiet. Neither him nor the courier wanted to dwell on the knowledge that she had been taking her final breaths. Uh, after that, the marshal came to appreciate the solitude night. You really weren't supposed to see this, were you? Yorkton was ironically born in Yorkton. And now she's dead. Time stops and once again marches forward. The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference. Look at this guy. Uh, sort of the North. He's a living legend with the Manitoba. Having cemented his status by securing the most unlikely of victories against the Mentis armies in the early days of the War of the Republican Coalition. Again and again, he has walked away from impossible battles unscathed, leaving a trail of broken enemies in the stead. Now, the Sword of the North stands at the precipice of history, determined to restore the kingdom's glorious legacy, no matter the cost. A race against history, but only if he's prepared to sacrifice everything. The Duchess is dead. Bells were toiling or tolling across the city as they had just arrived, for the people had been informed of the tragedy that had just befallen the Duchy. The Lord dismounted as he approached the capital's boulevard before making the way to the Ducal Palace on foot. Sophie's little butler, Tobias, watched him emerge from the sea of mourners that had gathered at the foot of the gates. The Lord held his head high, though Tobias recognized it for the act that it clearly was, his eyes betrayed the knot that had formed in his throat. The crowd parted as he advanced, some offering words of condolence to him as he passed by, for some, little more than a formality, for some, for most really, a cathartic act of grievance. Tobias pulled open the cow's gates, allowing Yorkton to squeeze through. They entered the immaculate halls and approached Sophie's resting place. Lord laid, uh, Lord's hand laid on his handle. Expecting his dismissal, the butler made to leave and said, Yorkton asked him to stay. Without turning to face him, he muttered, This is their fault, Tobias. It's because of them that she has left us, left me. Tobias remained silent, unsure of whom he spoke of. Yorkton's next words, however, revealed the subject of his venomous ire, that rotted corpse of a king, that corrupt nobles, the traitorous guise of Winnipeg. They are weakened her, sapped her of all her strength and determination. On this, I swear, they shall all pay. Tobias held his tongue, for the Lord spoke of treason against the crown itself. It was then that he entered her room, and paid his final heartfelt respects to the woman that had raised him as her own. They remained to grieve until the sun's glow began to wane and the shadows cast long. Uh, finally, as the Lord said his final goodbye, Tobias presented him with the Duchess's will. The butler watched him as he read it, the marshal's eyes widening and narrowing as they darted back and forth across the document. He turned to look at Tobias and spoke in a tone as cold as the frigid lakes. Gather the ducal cabinet, there's much work to be done. At once, my lord. Originally, under Leaf Yorkton has been declared to ensure and endure until Sophie's well settled. This set off a countdown to Yorkton's rebellion. When the time runs out, we'll go to war with the Kingdom of Manitoba. So we have to go to war, no matter what. When your arms workshops fast. I did go this one, expand the Yorkton armory. Uh, that just makes more sense. Archangel returns. Land auction. Two units, four units of militia. The Knights plot to the Knights. This was a long day long awaited. By Yorkton's orders in Alcander Weyburn's hands, the banishment of the Knights' decree, decree shall be rendered void in Langenberg. The veteran warriors and their descendants are already flocking to the capital, eager to fight alongside the Lord once more. Cool. So I'm going to try to do the focuses I've not done before and see if it's possible to do it. History awaits, my Lord. Uh, the time has come, exclaimed Tobias. Uh, they will have to, uh, we'll have to make our move soon. There's no time to dwell until we see the conflict through. Say the word, and I'll have a rider sent out to rally our loyalists. To your banner. Yorkton kept gazing out of the palace window, but the he heavy rain clattering against a thin layer of glass. Uh, but how many will answer the call? Tobias replied, Individually, my lord, few, but with enough work, a worthy coalition can be mustered. The bullet pulled out a notepad before adjusting his spectacles. As you will recall, most veteran knights were posted across the duchy following the disbandment of the orders. The memory of your deeds lives on in their hearts. I doubt many will hesitate to rally at your side. The same is true for regulars. Tobias glanced over to the marshal. Alone, they will hardly do. The four capel forces, the exiles, the remnants of the House of Dauphin in the north, I am afraid some level of compromise is called for. You can remain quiet for a time, taking in the man's words. Do you think we stand a chance, Tobias? The royal butler immediately caught on to the slight quiver in the marshal's voice. Are you afraid of fa failing Sophie, my lord? 
The marshal finally turned a newfound look of steel determination across, washing across his face. Get my coat, we're moving out. Excellent, my lord, and the second coalition. Eloy Steele of the Republic of Three Rivers wishes to finally end the long-standing conflict between the Kingdom of Manitoba and the nations formerly under its control. This then they have called upon the peoples of Manitoba together to form a coalition to take down the king, having dubbed it the Second Coalition in the spirit of the original war of the First Republican Coalition. We shall prepare this time. We shall see. In Yorkton's old loyalists, as at its prime, the Order of the Archangel was a truly terrifying force. Anyone now is capable of cutting down an entire squad of men all in their own lonesome. Clad head to toe in the kingdom's finest armor, their mere presence on the battlefield was capable of swinging the tides of battle once more on morale alone. With many of those same men under our command once more, we shall, we shall be ready to stand and reclaim the days of glory. Fort Capel. Within the Duchy of Longenburg, uh, there remained one more major faction within the power to stack the odds in the martial saber. The exiles of Fort Capel, and originally acting as enforcers for the House of Warwick in the city of Regina, their displays following the Metis uprising that brought an end to the family's rule over the southern duchy. In the decades that followed, uh, they kept a largely low profile, living out quiet lives in the western outskirts of the Duchy of Longenburg, keeping watch over everyday low lives and renegades. That was until the War of the Republican Coalition. Once the Mentos armies were driven back, Yorkton had to practically negotiate with the exiles uh, leaders to dissuade them from undertaking a revenge tour throughout Regina on that day. The lingering hatred for the insurgents was made plain for all to see. Um, and so, too, did the extensive stockpile of weapons they had retained since their initial escape, interestingly. Neither Sophie nor Gunn II ever moved to requisition the weaponry, perhaps. They thought that the exiles' zealousness could eventually be put to good use, and it appeared that that, get, that day had come at last. Oh, where's Regina? Oh, Regina's right here. They say it's best to let sleeping dogs lie, but this one had fangs unlike any Yorkton had seen before. Promising an eventual march into Regina should be an alluring enough proposition to secure the exiles of port, but what then? Once set loose, Yorkton would struggle to prevent them from unleashing vengeance on every man or woman with ties or loyalties to the Menace Congress. That would have sent a clear message, no doubt, but is this the kind of bloody precedent the Marshal would want to set for a new realm? It'll cost what it'll cost. This is what we would really want to do. I will not bargain myself for a few extra pair of hands. Well, maybe we should. The return of the exiles is informed that they will be waiting in the courtyard. Oh, you already expected a dozen. Uh, a couple dozen, perhaps, if he was lucky, but when he emerged out of the Ducal Palace, Longenburg's proud coat of arms could be seen stretching out beyond the gates. Uh, they all heeded his call, remnants of the disbanded Knight's Order. Up and comers cast out by jealous and insecure brass, unsavory taps who were not afraid to bend the rules to get the results, the eldest of the group stepped forward. No one man recalled when the herald came to us, we are yours to command. Yorkton placed his hand on his shoulder. In standing with me today, you have just secured a better tomorrow. Let us fight to our last breath to ensure it is not squandered. Yes, my lord. Nice. Exiles, you can be right there. You are what type of combo? With oh, you're 20 combo. Oh, that's pretty thick. Thickums, huh? That's what we like them. And here, Nightingale, huh? Not I turn her else. Tobias, where she goes, I will follow. Uh, Tobias' role as Duchess Sophie's Lord Butler is only the latest in a long and illustrious career as a servant of the crown. Throughout the decades, the man worked as a public administrator both within the Ducal and Kingdom State apparatuses, fostering a reputation across the land as a competent steward and jack of all trades. No matter the Ministry of Institution he's posted to, I'll breathe a sigh of relief whenever they see Tobias step in through the front door. Which is nice, but we're going to go with this one too. Uh, do they have one here? Oh, the Yorkton Arms, yeah. Uh, I still want the Golden Gecko just because I actually do want more caps. The Archangel returns. Leading the search for the Knights and Exiles, Alexander Weyburn, son of the fallen Grand Master of the Order of the Archangel. The young man's presence was instrumental in convincing some more of the despondent veterans out in the far flung reaches of the North to make the return. When he agreed on one condition that Alexander take up his father's mantle and officially restore the Order following his dismemberment at the hands of the cowardly Manitoba nobles. And so, on that day filled with pomp and ceremony, Alexander raised the sacred standard which was last seen trampled at the Battle of Yorkton. There, in the Ducal Chapel, he gave the pledge of the Archangel before the Order of Remnants, solemnly offering his heart for the people of Manitoba. He would protect the rightful king until the day God took him from his earth, this earth, but be it from enemies or without or within, like father, like son. Great. The Ducal Duchess deal. Over the course of several weeks, Yorkton traveled from settlement to settlement across the land in the hopes of mustering support from some of the minor accounts and title holders within the Duchy of Longenburg. It saved the most troublesome for last, Duchess Belorus of the fallen house of Dauphin. The titular title was once a source of Manitoba's naval prowess. Boasting a large old world port connected to the greater Winnipegosis throughout a through a narrow, narrow river trait strait. 
During the course of the war of the Republican coalition, Hubris got the best of Belarus's father, who had failed to recognize the trap he was being lured into by the insurgents. In one fell swoop, the kingdom lost the vast majority of its navy, leaving the royal port of Dauphin vulnerable to a devastating attack which crippled Manitoba's hold over the waters and cost the Duke his life. The chaotic struggle for inheritance that followed left Duchess Belarus landless, forcing her and a small cabal of loyalists into exile within the lands of Longenburg. As a token of gratitude for Sophie's magnanimity, the fallen noble spent every moon since fighting back against the monstrous horrors spilling across the duchy's northern frontiers from the neighboring blood of woods. The good duchess came with a lot of baggage. Uh, Yorkton thought to himself as he considered requesting her support ahead of what was to come. Her men had been through hell and back, no doubt, but they proved a formidable asset. The prospect of restoring ownership of House of Dauphin to the rightful heir should be enough to motivation should be enough motivation for the duchess to offer her heart for the time being, but once the dust had settled, what else could such a powerful ally hold over his head? Yorkton he continued to ponder this dilemma as he sent for Alexander, who marched through this chamber minutes later. You call my lord? The marshal turned to his right hand man. Be ready to set off. I have a proposition for Duchess Belorus. Ma, stepping, got my wires crossed. Carry on, Alexander. Oh no, we're not gonna have them. Uh, I, last time I did uh, new military reforms, and I did the marshal's men, but we're gonna do minor reforms this time. The kingdom's forces dwarfs are, are in manpower alone. If we're to level the playing field, we'll have to take what we can get, and fast. A quick and dirty recruitment drive in the frontier is a good start. And the citizens' militias. Longenberg's northern frontiers are treacherous, and their resources can only stretch so far. In response, citizen militias have started cropping up in some of the more remote settlements. Not exactly a formidable fighting force by any means, but in the time available to us, they will have to do. Return of the cousin. What do you mean, letting him through? Uh, let him through, I said. An all too familiar voice bellowed out from behind the marshal. Hey, Leafy. You're going to let out a deep sigh, summoning every ounce of patience left in him. As he turned, he was met with a pearly white smile and fiery locks of his cousin. Hello, Eric. It's been some time. Eric sat in front of the marshal's desk, kicking the heels over the surface. Uh, let me... Uh, Tell me about it. Oh, Leaf sighed. Done bleeding the ink's dry already. Eric placed his hand over his chest, playfully frowning. Hey, all I have to offer are my services. If the customer decides that they aren't the right fit, uh, that's on them. Leaf sat back at the desk, uh, massaging his temple. What do you want, Eric? Also, could you please put your feet down? I just had this brought in. The cousin complied, leaning closer to the marshal. Look, long story short, I need a new gig. They, uh, I'm not exactly welcome back east no more, and I hear that you're making some big moves. Eric winked. Leaf backs, leaned back in his seat. Right. As the marshal began compiling a list of excuses to send his troublesome cousin on his way, he stopped to reflect, at the height of his power. Uh, the kingdom of Manitoba kissed the banks of just about every major river in the region. Trade was, as a result, one of its largest assets. Those days had come and gone, but maybe, just maybe, he could make the man recapture this lost legacy down the line. And once that was accomplished, he would need those people who could manage the buying and selling of goods up and down those treacherous waters. Eric might have been a swindler, swindler on the side, but his experience in that field was undeniable. The marshal groaned, I might have something for you in the future, but you're going to have to be patient for the time being, Eric bolted up. Yes, no, never doubted I could count on you, cousin. I knew those town guys down at the pub were full of it. With that, he turned around and made his way out of the marshal's office, lightly whistling to himself. Wait, what did they say about me? Hey, get one of you to, of regards, too. The Unknown Benefactor Yorkton swung open the doors of the Ducal Armory, the smell of gunpowder and cold steel immediately assaulting his senses. On sight were a handful of guards dragging in the last of the crates from outside. One of them sprinted over to the marshal. Please, my lord, we have not had the opportunity to fully inspect the shipment in yet. Yorkton dismissed him, approaching the dozen or so containers that had been dragged to the back of the room. He grabbed a nearby crowbar and cranked open one of the sealed crates, rifles, and ammo boxes, just like all the rest. Nothing exactly flashy or state-of-the-art, but sturdy, efficient, and most importantly, easy for anyone to wield. One of the patrols had found the crates scattered in front of the palace gates in the dead of the night. The marshals missed a benefactor using the cover of the blizzard to go by undetected. Whoever they may be, they must be sit with the marshal's inner circle. So aware of Yorkton's plans for the duchy. Whatever the case, the Sword of the North was not about to let this investment go to waste. I wonder if they'll come knocking once it's all over. Fantastic. We could always use more guns, because we love guns here. Um, however, I'm low word. Map is decent. That did help us out with our deficit of infantry equipment. Quite a bit, actually. Um, but I don't re like to rely on militia. Militia's so weak. I mean, they're river guards. Not great. We're going to probably convert them to this infantry uh, group here. How, many more, how, many, how much more time do we have? We got 190. That's not too bad. As we could kind of continue doing minor reforms, civilian militia. Um, I brought, brought this earlier, but you know. Langenberg's northern frontiers are treacherous and our resources can only stretch so far. In response, citizen militias have started cropping up in some of the more remote settlements. Not exactly a formidable fighting force by any means, but in the time available to us, they'll have to do. So, um, And then I did remember doing this one last time expand the Yorkton Armory, which is obviously better, and the Marshall's Industrial Backbone, which is obviously better than the other ones. Because um, all they do is just give you equipment, which is still necessary and good to have, don't get me wrong. But, 
for locating the guns. If there's one thing the kingdom has more than enough of, that would be guns. So overflowing with rifles is the royal armory, that anyone would be hard pressed to notice if a desert or so crates worth of equipment went unregistered, and then we went with medicine acquisition. It's not so long. It will not take long for the royal authorities to start questioning the suspicious volume of major workplace accidents filled by the duchy oversight, or over the past couple of months. By the time they come knocking over, it will be too late. A remnant of days gone by. He rocked in lightly and knocked against the Duke Ongar's office door, waiting patiently as the sound of ruffling papers grew ever closer. Eventually, a light gap op creaked open, a lone eye scanning the marshal. Oh, greetings, Leif. Excuse me for a second. The door closed for a moment before suddenly swinging open. The man on the other side appeared wary, his face sunken. What can I do for you? muttered the Duke as he waded past piles of manuscripts scattered across the floor on the way to his desk. He worked and carefully treated around them. A mixture of nautical maps, archival records, and recovered from Ongar's ducal library. All blueprints of the shield wall of the east. Cutting straight to the chase, the marshal pulled out Sophie's will from his coat pocket, handing it over to the Duke. Read the final paragraph. The noble, fallen noble, unfolded the document, scanning its final few lines with an increasingly apprehensive look in his eyes. Just what on earth are you planning? Have you summoned his majesty to Longenburg yet? Your concern and expression spoke for itself. The Duke's gaze fell. You are still holding, my friend. I'm here to lighten the burden. Uh, no need for to remain a pipe dream. The Duke pulled away from his desk, sinking his head into his palm. No, still no word from the colonies, I take it. You are to impress. None responded to the Duke, an audible knot forming in his throat. He looked away for a moment. What would you have me do, Leif? Yorkton responded without hesitation. When the day comes, there's no other man that I'd rather keep watch over the coastline and hold the line if need be. The Duke remained silent for a moment, uh, and his anguish looks slowly turning muted. Do you promise, Leif, to check on them of what remains? You have my word. Hey, we have a naval advisor now. Look at that. That's fantastic. As we now have a couple of uh, ginseng guava tea here to keep us nice and refreshed as we talk, or at least you can read about the Day of Infamy once again. Cool. How many more days do we have left now? Super tech cup technology. I thought I'd do that one already, but whatever. Um, 135, 100 some odd days. So you have these guys now. Actually, yeah, you're gonna follow here. And what are they like? So we got backline guards, which is nine combat width, which is 150. Uh, just a little bit more manpower than what we need here. So all but you, uh, actually, you guys, because you guys are standard bears. You guys. Oh, river guards. Well, that's only one of you. Go and switch over to this one as we're working on getting more infantry. Hundred thirty-five. Let's start against more armies. Be Marshal Johannes. You'd be surprised what a few push-ups on a large enough scale can accomplish. Johannes is a, one of the few living remnants of Absalom's reign, a former duchy of the kingdom lost to the bloody electoral and the scarlet blizzard. Even during the noble family's rule, the marshal spent much of his working life in Yorkton's shadow. The man's prospects were crippled by his insecurities and rigid methodicalness. In many ways, the fall of the duchy proved a blessing for, for Johannes, allowing him to carve out a reputation as a competent, if slightly unambitious leader, unburdened by the expectations the world has set upon him. Cool. Ah, very good. And so this guy's gonna lead all the infantry. Venture out. Oh, well, let's see. Division oh, speed, infrastructure, attack, defense. That's not bad. Either experience gains pretty good. Uh, but mystery stranger it is. Uh, and enduring, charismatic, inspirational. I would like you to become the sniper of all of us. Sure. Does it help us out right now? No, but whatever. We got plenty of guns now. And I'll honestly then, so be it. All but you two. Uh, Kingdom Exiles, actually, we need a lot of equipment for this, which makes sense, but still. Um, that's going to hurt our manpower, hurt our equipment, but it's just so that we are very good. And now we're out of a lot of equipment, which is not ideal, but you know, it is what it is. Can we buy any more things here? At least very least guns, yes? No, we have no money, okay. No money, uh, but has that ever stopped us before, you know? Last will and testament. The guns have been mustered and the knights have been ready. The men have been riled. Before we can march into Brandon, though, hearts and minds alike would have to be won. Absolutely. Ah, another division, good. I call the militias, but that's not too bad, honestly. Uh, we're gonna need more of this too. Getting that extra stuff here. And they are using militia themselves, so it's not a completely like we're completely outclassed here. But they do have quite a few divisions, and infantry is just stronger in general. And then what? Revising our doctrine. The W campaign. Manpower would be nice, because we need we're gonna need that. More advanced weaponry would be good too. 
How about wartime recruitment? Uh, five whole acres to any able-bodied man who's willing to serve until dismissal. Hardly a better deal than that in the periphery. And then you call in favors with arms manufacturers. We still have unclosed tabs among some of the black market's largest arms dealers. It's about time we paid them a visit. The W Campaign. Press releases, recruitment posters, and the occasional parade. The internally dubbed W Campaign has proven a smashing success thus far. When the people wander their towns, uh, asking themselves questions about the conflict, they'll be sure to get, them before, get to them before anyone else does. Last will and testament, Lord Yorkton emerged under the balcony, uh, the ducal palace overlooking the solemn cobblestone front yard, and the curious masses of the capital. City officials had summoned them to the palace gates for reasons undisclosed. He leaned into the microphone placed on the podium before him. Loyal subjects of the royal duchy, I thank you all for coming. As you may be aware, I have been presiding over the lands of Longenburg as regent since the passing of her grace. He paused for a moment, letting the fond memories of the duchess, high, duchess reign wash over the masses. During this time, I have seen to it carrying out the measures listed in her will. You may have seen an influx of land surveyors throughout your neighborhoods, as well as more frequent armed patrols roaming the capital. But the reason I brought you here today is to announce her final request. He paused again. This was it. Her grace has entrusted me to leave Yorkton with the rule of the realm. Murmurs and chatter filled the yard, as most of you are aware, the Duchess had no direct descendants. It would have been very easy for her to allow the realm to fall into the hands of the king, as custom would dictate in these circumstances. He raised his finger into the air, but her grace recognized the danger facing the duchy. She recognized the decadence, the contempt, and the infighting that have brought ruin to the kingdom. She knew that the realm could not prosper under a hollow king. He paused, letting his vitriol settle under the crowd. Even in death, she seeks to protect you, and trusted me to carry out the most noble of goals, and as I have done for once, several moons ago, I'll strive to succeed in that endeavor once more. He stopped. Seconds went by inter interminably. Eventually, from the back of the crowds, a faint ch chant reached him. Ton, then louder, Lord Yorkton, then louder, your Lord Yorkton, until the yard rubbed into the one unified cry, Lord Yorkton, again, again, and again. He raised his arms for the crowd, whether it was the Duchess legacy or his own record on the battlefield. He had done it. The die was cast. Within days, word would reach Brandon. Within days, the powers that would be will muster his forces to crush this new threat to their bloodline, and within days, he'd create the Asiniboine to put, to put a stop to them. Print out the will and then spread it to the neighboring settlements. Yes, absolutely. Not bad, not bad. Oh, we're going to need some dynamite too, aren't we? Oh, yes, we are. Dynamite, support equipment. Um, yeah, dynamite. Uh, scrap bikes. Uh, I guess we could do that one too. Not bad. Yeah, we just need more of everything here, pretty much. Uh, how many more days do we have? And do we go to war with them? Do they go to war with us? If not completed, the last one testament is not completed. It will have serious consequences for our ability to wage war during the rebellion. It will make us appear illegitimate in the eyes of our people. We'll go to war with the Kingdom of Manitoba in about 30 days. It gives us more time to uh, muster our defenses, which is very good. Oh, what is that? Oh, we're already on a small professional army. Oh, the Kings are on too. Interesting. Uh, I like the political power. Did I choose that one already, huh? I think I would have already. Ooh, Eric Yorkton, Earl Grey, like the T. Sylvie, interesting. Ooh, special force equipment. Godric? Oh, that's. We had to get Godric. Production cost reliability goes down. What do we have here? Army offense? I mean, 15%, that's really good. Organization, supply consumption, and recovery rate. Special force equipment. Ooh. That's very strong too. I like that a lot. The division experience gain more breakthrough. Um, fifteen percent is something you cannot pass up, though. An army of the state. Oh, consumer gets fifty percent. Oh my god. I think more captain comes out nice. Up, but it's not too good though. Um, anything else here we really want? Yorkton arms. I want to wait for Yorkton arms. That'd be ideal. Well, let's get Tobias. Stability, war support. That would help us with our defense. Get some more political power too. Um, yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Just produce, 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 even though, we, as we've seen, we got pretty hard uh, with the lack of resources. And our penalty to uh, production. Celebration? The couple in charge of the Stampede have announced the birth of their child and the nation has been celebrating. The parties can be heard across the prayers and the citizens joyfully give news to anyone passing through. That jo joy, daughter of the John of Locke, our clan, Army Lee, Amy Lee of the Sundell clan has come into the world. And most importantly, the most loving family of all, the Stampede. Yeah. Oh, that's the most lovely of all. Spec Ops. Tank combo with Royal Knights. Those are better. Alright, let's uh, Some of you are done training. I'm going to have you all stop training for now. There are two divisions there just in case. Some of these areas are going to look pretty weak. We need to mobilize more. As much as I don't want to do King's Army compared to this one. 
Uh, still not bad. Mm -hmm. Tobias, Nightingale, Stability, Rewards for Approval Population, Monthly Population. Consumer goes, resources, the market goes down, which kind of sucks, but still. But we do, like I said, we have a cup of tea to keep us nice and refreshed. Armorsmith, Goderick? Yeah. I forward just what I do. Goderick was just one of the several veterans forced to step back from the battlefield following a debilitating injury incurred during the War of the First Republican Coalition. Following a lengthy period of soul searching, as well as some timely assistance from the Duchy Social Services program, he moved to harness his experience as a field aide to secure a position as Ducal Armorsmith. Godrick stands out from his peers and his experiences on the front lines, having provided him with a first-hand insight to address some of the most grievous oversights found in the designs of the soldiers for standard issue equipment. And now, it's only 50% more armor, which is not, it's extreme, but, I mean, armor's not great right now, but eventually, it'll get better and better and better and better, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm sure we'll go that one, too. Why not? How many words? Oh! Oh, we might want to save here, just in case, because it's time to go to war. God, I hope we can hold out. Oh, God, please. Please. Gonna uh, yeah, request alone now. Seriously, bro. Uh, can you hold here? Can you hold? That'd be fantastic if you could hold. Here, hold here. Take these guys with us. Run, my knights, run! Yeah, we need those guns. That'll be good. Yeah, looking nice, looking decent. If they don't want to attack across the river, that's fine. I can throw you somewhere else. Uh, a lot more vampires, always. Definitely helpful right now. Yorkton's Rebellion. And if they want to attack us, I'm not completely against that, just because it's good army XP. That we could really use, you know? Uh, we definitely have to get manpower next. Just want to bait them into attacking us there. One militia? Oh, well. Yeah, maybe. Of course, they are taking with the militia, too, which is good. But taking one of their tiles will really, well, really piss them off. You hold. Improvised tools are good. Mm -hmm. Still want to attack? I like it. I like it a lot. Do your worst. Revising your doctrine. It did not take long for the veterans to shake off the rust. Mere weeks into the campaign, they're already coming to me, eager to share about their insights. Yeah, that's pretty good. better already. Support equipment looking fantastic. Um, this is a standard infantry. This is the Kingdom Exiles, which, uh, uh we're gonna go with the Kingdom's Guard. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and start throwing on camps, because it gives you better XP loss, trickle back, which is fantastic, because we don't have a ton of manpower. We have none. It gives us more HP, and eventually it helps us with attack and defense and radioactive waste, which isn't very far, but it's just very strong to use to help keep your manpower alive, at least a little bit. Um, let's see. Yeah, I can't change out of that yet. I think we'd really need to mobilize a little bit more. That extra thousand manpower really helped out. Four time recruitment? Sure, why not? I mean, we've lost 24. 430, not bad. Get a little bit of caps. Uh, they're only fighting us, which is fine. Good. Yeah, 456. They're not the strongest. I don't think I've actually played this gun the second yet, have I? Maybe I have. I think I might have, yeah, actually. Come on, how much political power to get? Not even one a day, god dang it. Last one testament. Of course, that does help us too. Longenburg will be united behind Marshal Yorkton, the beloved Duchess's endorsement, transcending any and all lingering loyalties for King Gun II. But the legacy can only, carry, can only carry one so far. As the Duchess losses mount, the people's faith will be tested. The Sword of the North will have to move quickly if his uprising is to succeed. Good. Well, let's keep moving in then. They, I, I don't want to stop at having them attack us. Wow. Not bad. Kingdom's Guard. Yeah, now we definitely have to mobilize a little more. 
Half of you combined. Let's see if a tiny bit of manpower that way. Nice. He bolstered him up a little bit more. And put him there. See selection. Ah, they helped us out with manpower too. This is very good. Land action still going, which is good. More output. Uh, it's a little ahead of time. Maybe a little bit too ahead of time. 218 days. Fine, we'll do that one instead. That's fine for now. I don't want to interrupt the enemy while they're making a mistake, you know? Life giver. Recover faster, yeah. It's a good way to burn enemy army XP and divisions. Kingdom's guard. 20 combo width. Uh, fire teams, demo teams, we got none of that yet. You know what? We're going to risk it. We're going to go with Lord Yorkton first for even way more attack. Soak up that political power. And are they going to attack us at least one more time, maybe? Well, we're no longer the last one testament. That'll make us a little weaker, but it's alright. Can we do anything here? So, not you. Go here. You go here, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not, they're not trying anymore. No surprising. Let it move around, and then we'll have our special forces attack here, too. Oh, they're attacking us now, too. Well, all right. I would like to make it an encirclement. That's what we're really trying here for. Good manpower. Nice. Resistors. here. Not bad. A good. Uh, take the stronger one for now. It's not great, but we're winning. We're slowly but surely winning. Taking out these three divisions will be strong, especially that armor division. Sir, you are not leaving. You are not allowed to leave these premises until you, like, expire. Yeah, I'll put it like that. Hey, look at that. Oh, no. They lost more divisions. Oh, could have seen that one coming. Oh no, their special forces are getting stronger too. Oh no. Oh, we can't go there. Oh, we're going to the man. Oh, well, we have the manpower that we have. That's not ideal. Uh, but okay. Go all the way down here if you can. That would be fantastic. And once we get all these soldiers here, that'd be also good too. Throw them here too. Good. Now let them figure out and cry about it. Decode the signals. Scrambled. Nice. And take all but you. Go here. There's only one division. There's only a militia division. It's not much, but still manpower worth destroying. Even if they get there, it doesn't matter. And we are there. Fantastic. Go ahead. Amazing. Could we do a general assault? Probably, honestly, at this point, we've taken out enough divisions. They have up to 19, we have 23. They have vastly more divisions. Give them a little bit of time to get to where they need to really be. Uh, sure. More well, support sounds pretty good to me. You know what? Research speed 2? Why not? And we'll try it. I like mostly greens. That's good. Yeah, that's right. You, someone's going to get down here. Darn it. Well, it wasn't one of us yet. Oh, let them come. They have their uses. Get all the way down here so we can circle them and destroy them too. They do have a port, which is not good for us, but whatever. Looks like for the most part we're doing very well. Careful planning it usually pays off. I did say this is going to be the Special Forces guy, right? Yeah. Probably switch him around. 
Oh, not all the same. Boop, boop. There you go. Oh, that's right. Just one at a time. There you go. That's fine. Just here to make it stronger. Not sure why I wanted logistic companies, but whatever. Well, I guess we're just going to walk into Brandon. Oh, I guess there's a waterway there. Doesn't matter. Hey, we got a Navy too that they didn't need, right? Yeah, exactly. How thoughtful of them. The count that became king. The settlements have been circled. The capital's battlements have been fallen. The last of the king's men have laid down their arms. It's time to reap the rewards. I think so, too. Ooh, the Unbound are doing pretty well against those guys, huh? Um, I don't know. Blighted Woods next, maybe? Arborg Junta's doing okay. Reinvigorating the realm. Not bad. Fate of the Monarchy. King's Army. Well, let's go this one. War is never cheap, but when waged among states, a victor can expect to make up at least some of the losses. Not so much a case for internal scuffles, though. Over the next few months, they'll have to engage in an extensive reconstruction effort. Lots of people begin yearning for the old regime. The day long awaited. Lord Yorkton swung open the immaculate wooden doors, other kingdoms throne room slowly taking in the sights. Other decadent royal halls, memories of his youth came flooding on in. Uh, it was here where the rifle king had first issued him with a monumental task of defending the land from his insurrectionists, gnawing at the realm from all directions. And it was here where a cabal of cowardly aristocrats plotted to take what he had rightfully earned on the field of battle from under him. Ever since the takeover of the rancid gun in the second, the kingdom had faced steady decline, but it seemed as though the rot had done nothing to sully the splendor of these halls. As reminiscing was interrupted by unexpected sight, the crown of the kingdom, as enchanting as the walls that contained it, had discarded on the cold floors. The time it could not have worked out better. As the elite detachment of knights accompanying the marshal entered the hall following their external sweep, the first thing they laid eyes on was a man raising the most important jewel of the land over his head. The soldiers dropped to one knee in reverence, but before the captain could utter a word, Lord Yorkton was quick to set his priority straight. Launched a search of the palace and its surroundings for gun and his ilk, a one before me over the coming days. He then turned to the knights second in command, you. Issue a message to the platoon le leader stationed across the major settlements. Tell them to inform the counts, the local counts, that I shall be in touch to dis soon to discuss, if possible for a moment, upcoming administrative adjustments. With that, the knights quickly got back on their feet and scrambled out the hall. Lord York began pacing around the room. He had just bought himself some time. There was only one matter left to resolve before he could consolidate his rule, cutting out the head of the snake. The long-awaited throne was finally his. Hey, now we're the king of Manitoba, and create our own faction. And with this one, well-equipped army? Nice. While well, thus taking over the administration of the kingdom, we'll also have to reconnect Landenberg's economic infrastructure with that of the Kremlin. We'll also present challenges that finally allow us to normalize our economy, uh, reorganize the Manitoban army, an effort to rebuild of the kingdom's shattered army. As quickly as possible, I've elected to offer pardons to all military personnel outside the top brass willing to remain enlisted. Very few have opted for the goal for the sake of the raw nobility. So, King's army, good. Remove Langenburgian army, which is, eh, we'll get, lose some boss, but that's alright. With the integration of the kingdom armies, the Langenburgian army system has done more or less fallen apart. Also, allows to mobilize a larger armed forces it also means that we will no longer enjoy the benefits of our former professionalism. To Leaf Yorkton with love. Leaf, we are familiar with the tales out from east. Migrants and pilgrims alike have told us a great many tales of your legends and the trials you have faced. Our lives may not have been so easy, have they? The wasteland can be such a cruel place. While we place our faith in the kingdom's people to resolve its issues, that does also include your appeal. And so we sent you shipment of infantry equipment. May your knights return soon with strength friend, with love, John Lockhart, and Amy Lee Sundell, for one something right, and the fate of the old monarchy. The clock strikes midnight for the aristocrats and the corpse king. Soon the record shall be set straight, and every debt will be paid in kind, and a new age for the kingdom. With the army whipped back into shape and the claimants dealt with, my rule over the kingdom of Manitoba is secured, but that was always going to be a relatively straightforward affair. Only now does the kingdom have the tools needed to correct years of mismanagement and incompetence by those at the top, and I will make sure the people are aware of that. Oh. Eleanor York becomes a uh, unit leader. That's pretty cool. And take a look. See, we're cored everything. Yay! No wonder we're decently strong. Keen and Manitoba are looking pretty good. Ooh, our poor Junta. What a giant mistake have you made. Oh, I guess we need another general here, don't we? Fantastic. Led by Alexander Wayburn. Their day has come. Yorkton quickly straightened back into his throne as a procession of knights and palace guards marched into the halls of the tribunal. 
Both judge and jury sitting to his left and across from the hall. From him respectively, turned to watch as the armed men showed gun the King Gun the Second and the Queen Catherine into the center of the room, a bright spotlight casting down from above their heads. The knights had found him huddled in a corner of a hidden set of chambers, and the man's visage buried deep in the weeping arms queens. It had been days, yet Lord Yorkton could still spot the trails of expensive eyeliner encrusted under the woman's cheeks. His eyes darted over to the fallen king, his visage hollow and unmoving. Was this all he had to picture himself triumphing over for years? A husk of a man on the verge of clinical insanity and his prolificate spouse. The trial carried on for hours, and the judge painstakingly listed out each and every one of the administrative's failures, abuses of power, and reckless warmongering that had taken place under gun stewardship. As the day carried on, Yorkshire's daughter Eleanor, who stood at his side alongside the king's personal guard regiment, appeared increasingly restless. As the trial began drawing to a close, she inched closer, softly tucking at a sleeve. Father, a word? Yorkton glanced over to the judge, lightly raising his hand, who, turned in, who in turn bellowed out, The jury will withdraw to deliberate. Eleanor led Yorkton to a side room, closing the door behind him. Or them. Father, I understand why you may feel that letting the king live is a risk too great to butt. Uh, she looked at the floor. Please spare Queen Catherine. Even as consort, she has always done well by the people. I've witnessed it. She does not deserve what is coming to gun. Yorkton corked an eyebrow. Oh, a few months in this court and you already started making friends, and besides, it is for the jury to decide. Eleanor snapped back. The jury you picked. I recall playing knights with half the people in that tribune when I was a child. Yorkton opened his mouth in protest, but was cut off. Please just lock her away if you have to. This bloodshed, it's, it's unnecessary. She moved closer to him. Father, what kind of leader do you dream of becoming? She looked away dejectedly. The sword of the north I grew up hearing stories of would know. You my word, no harm will come her way. Your objections have been noted. Last time I was pretty generous, but a pensive walk. Yorkton trudged through the corridors of the tribunal, his daughter's words ringing in his ear. He approached the room holding the jury convening on the fate of the royal couple. Guarding it were two veteran knights, my lord. Is there anything the matter? Good question. He only had to say the word, and the men would suggest to those inside that Queen Catherine could not be held accountable for the sins of her husband. Regardless, he could not imagine a future where letting a member of the recently disposed monarchy breathe would not uh, come back to haunt him. My lord, Yorkton snapped out of his thoughts about Queen Catherine. I must take a wrong turn. Carry on, my men. I'll raise a sharp sword. Yorkton sat back in his throne as both judge and jury re-entered the hall. His cheeks sank back into his, sank into his fist as he pensively leaned into the armrest. After a few moments, an aide emerged from a side door, handing a slip of paper over to the judge. The man pushed his reading glasses back as he skimmed through the document very well. He glanced over the jury, nodding. A man stood uh, at the tribunes and began reading out from a booklet. After careful consideration for the evidence presented, the jury finds Gun the Second and Spouse guilty in all accounts. Without hesitation, the judge turned up the accused. For your crimes against the realm, I sentence you both to death by hanging. The execution will be carried out at dawn. He nodded to the knights that stood on guard. Take him away. The knights dragged the royal couple out of the hall, neither putting up any resistance. Yorkton glanced over to Catherine. She appeared almost serene. The marshal fell to not forming in his throat. He glanced over to Eleanor, who refused to meet his gaze, looking off into the distance with a barely contained glisten in her eye. Yorkton turned back to face the royal couple. She would come to understand. Not today, perhaps, but soon. Just as well. She herself would someday be forced to make these decisions. If she had to sulk, better get out of the way now. Can we wrap this all up? The question Hudson's Bay Company. The judge grunted as he shuffled through a stack of papers scattered across his desk. We move on to the final agenda for the uh, agenda item for the day. The privatization of the Hudson Bay Company. All right, the Hudson's Bay. An interesting case, that one. According to ancient texts, it existed as a fur trading enterprise centuries before the bombs even dropped, before the Great War. It evolved into a proper commercial empire whose influence spread from coast to coast. No surprise it retained enough influence to continue operating as de facto governing authority in the decades leading up to the formation of the kingdom. And even then, the regime was too cowardly to put it in its place, allowing it to effectively carve out a duchy of its own in the north, until today anyway. Yorkton had no love for the faceless rulers, and the chaotic aftermath of his immediate takeover he instructed a small squad of knights to discreetly operate the co company's board and seize its assets. All they had to do was uh, left their name with a small, bespeckled man representing them in court, but the company's fate had already been decided. All he could do was report to his superiors that the company would answer to the, directly to the crown, so may lead to some unforeseen advantages in the future, and that enterprise would be sold up to the highest bidder. This seems like the one I would choose, so we'll sell up to the highest bidder. Manitoba on the offensive. Huh? I like being on the offensive. Uh, Army of the Future? Well, at the height of its rule, the Kingdom of Manitoba was a true jewel of the wasteland, boasting the far-flung duchies that fueled its riches and diverse industries. Decades of war and mismanagement have unraveled much of this prosperity, shrinking the realm's size and power. Nevertheless, history has given me a unique opportunity to restore a glorious legacy, and I intend to grab it with both hands, and then the worst of our losses. Winnipeg nearly killed the kingdom, and if it were not for the blood and sweat of my men, it would have. As the rebels saw for even moment that the clobbering would be at the end of it, they've got another thing coming. And then, oh, yeah, striking at the center. Boldan, a farcical holy man, is band of zealots feasting on the carcass of the kingdom's breadbasket. They'll soon learn that in these lands there's only one they ought to be bowing to, but I think one of there, we've been very successful overall. 
If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a fat like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow, and I'll see what else we can do with the good old Kingdom of Manitoba and his A to Z series. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.